Well, hey, everybody. This is Mary Agnes Antonopoulos. Today is Thursday, May 7th, and tonight's class is on meetup groups, and that's the screen that you're looking at right now, and I am really excited to teach this. I was just saying before I started our recording that oftentimes meetup is the least attended class of all the classes in the series that I teach, and that's because people don't think they need it, but when you get it, when you get the opportunity that LinkedIn has for you to reach massive amounts of people and be really successful, you're going to be really happy you took this class. So I just want to sort of preempt. There's no slides that go with today's class. Meetup is sort of, um, well, Meetup is one of those spaces where it's easier to show you everything. And I have slides, but I've decided not to use them. I just think I'm going to jump right in. And I want to tell you the why about Meetup. So first, I'm just going to introduce you to the space. This is meetup.com, and it is filled with groups of people who meet in a like-minded way within a region live. So, I mean, I just want you to think about the overarching demographic of this. So let me go in, and I'm going to find one of the meetups that I belong to. It's called Bucket List Babes. Oh, where are we? Bucket list. There we are. So this is one of the groups that I belong to, and I just love it. Um, it's a really great space. I'm not going to float around too much and show you because I think I'm looking at it from the inside. I am. And if you're not a member, I don't want to showcase the members to non-members. But the first thing I want you to know is, like, this is an amazing space to reach people who are action takers. Now, why do I say that? Because anyone willing to leave their home to pursue an interest is an action taker. They're not somebody who's lurking. They're not somebody who's just online. They're somebody who's willing to chase an experience. And people who are willing to chase an experience are by nature usually action takers. So the demographic, the overarching demographic of Meetup already has a unique slant, right? We know these are people willing to leave their home. So that's one thing. The second thing is we know that they're social. So that's another thing. The third and fourth are amazing. And I'm going to go back to the page we were on just before this. And this is the search page. So when you come into your home in meetup.com, this is what it looks like. So it's just three or four things. It says, you know, there are 122,000 meetups happening this week and 61 meetups in my group. So of the groups I belong to, there are 61 events happening and 258 meetups with friends. So this is kind of a cool thing. What you'll see here is a list of the events that are happening in the groups to which you belong. And on the right is a calendar. So I can say, hey, I want to do something Saturday night. So I'll just click on the calendar and it'll show me what the events are starting that day going forward. So it's got some great functionality as a space. I'm going to use my own groups to sort of walk you through what's possible, and then I'll use groups that I contact. So the class is going to go like this. It's going to be, how do you start and use a meetup group? How do you reach out to other meetup groups that already exist? And basically, why be on meetup? But you're going to understand that as we go through each and every aspect of this. So I just want to welcome everybody who's here. So... Uh, welcome, Doug. Welcome, Judy. Welcome, Chef Uma. Welcome, Barakins. And this is it. There's only four of you on tonight. So this is a great opportunity when we finish to get questions answered and to just um, put things out there that might be specific to you, where we try and do that every class, but this is a really good space to do it. For all of you watching on the recording, I know some of you wrote me, you are welcome to send me questions and I will respond to you also. So this is meetup.com. And if I didn't already have a profile, I just want to show you how easy it would be to start one. It literally is like maybe 10 questions. So your name, your email, your password, and basically you're in. It's one of the easier spaces to get into actually. So here I am. I'm just going to log in with my fast pass as me. You know what? I think I was just going to say, I think that's not it. There we go. 
I have two meetup accounts. Why? Because each meetup account you own can only host and own three groups. And I host and own way more than that. So I've actually got three or four. Why is my, why is this always jumping while we're in the meeting? Okay. So here in meetup, this is one of my favorite places to play because you can change the region, how far away and what kind of group you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for groups with writers within five miles of New York City. And you have to make sure that you grab their, um, I don't want to just type in New York, I want to grab what they call it, right? Because New York is one of those places. I want to grab theirs from the drop down. Don't just write an NYC or something, because this is a space that has a very specific, um, I, I don't know what to call it, like their drop down, their search function is very specific. So here we go. The next thing that happens is, you can see the calendar, and it'll usually default to this. Or I can see the groups. So this would be events with the word writers in it, or the groups. So this is a toggle here on the right, and it sorts. This is also a drop down. So the drop downs are hidden, they're underlined. So the distance is a drop down, the region is a drop down, this is a toggle, and then here it sorts by recommended groups but we want the most members, and this is why. So these are great writers groups in New York City, and they're going from how many people downward. So French, French New York City, okay, uh, but New York Screenwriters Collective, 3,603 writers. I'm right in the middle of the page. Shut Up and Write New York City, 3,516 writers. Why is this important? Well, first of all, I just want you to see the number of groups that are tagged to writers. Isn't this crazy? It's huge. Oh, look, there's still more. So if I wanted to reach out and offer to come speak at a group, if I had a book launching, let's see what happens. So I can reach out to Shut Up and Write NYC, and I'm going to say, now I could join the group, and look. Profile questions. So when you host a group, I'm going to show you in the second half of today's class how to ask profile questions. So they're very smart to ask you to fill out profile questions because then you can know the demographic of your group. And if you have something you offer, you can make sure that you're offering it in a specific way that's useful to the group. So if you have a currently have a specific writing project, what is it? Um, I'm writing a slightly autobiographical short novel. Um, it reads a little bit like Cuckoo's Nest. Meets Angel's Ashes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go through. They may have other questions. Nope, that was it. They only had one question. Some of my groups, I have four or five questions, and I'm going to tell you why. Oh, just bear with me. I'm just trying to plug in my laptop here. Okay. So they only have one question, but I'm going to show you some of mine in a few minutes, and I've got more questions than that because I need to know something about my people so I know how to serve them. So... Check out our next meetup. This is their welcome message, which is great. Not everybody puts one in, but this is terrific. We should all have a welcome message when somebody joins. Then we're going to say, check out our next meetup. So this is the next thing on their calendar. So I want you to always have something on your calendar, even if it's virtual, like our classes. Now, you agree to do live meetings, but you can also do virtual meetings. So think about that for a minute. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You could do virtual real estate tours and point out great things about great real estate if you were a real estate broker. So you can be very creative with this sort of idea, right? So there's their next event. It's written up beautifully. This is terrific. And you would RSVP if you were going. So I could literally say, oh, May 10th, Mother's Day. Sure, I'm going. Click. Nine people are already going, and you can actually see who they are. So this is very powerful.
But for the most part, the reason I want to be in meetings like this, meetups like this, I'm going to click home, is this. Now, you may have already noticed that the structure is always the same. They look differently, but think of it like a human body. Every meetup group has a head, and that's where their title is. They have two arms, the left and the right, and then they have a body. On the left arm, when you're looking at it from here, you will see the same information. You'll see the region they're located in, and about us, which will tell you more about the group. Let's click it and see. Oh, nice, great. Um, group reviews, that's terrific. People are saying what a great, terrific group it is. Nice. But the most important thing is underneath that is the organizer, and you can click contact. So I like to start my meetup groups with a welcome message when I join. I'm just going to say, hi, Ronnie. I'm so excited to have joined our group. Joined your group. I just wanted to offer that I teach a class on um, using the Amazon algorithm. Sorry, that shouldn't be capitalized to support a one a, a short Amazon run for bestseller. I've launched 25 bestsellers on Amazon, all top 10, 19 of them, number one in category. I don't charge for this. It's just a service. Let me know if this would support your group. So you get it, guys, right? So this is just a really short little note. Newest member. So this is it. I did that really fast. But look, one, two, three, it's out there. I reached the owner of the group, and I showcased what I do and that I wanted to be in service. So this is a really great thing to do. And that's just the first second I belonged to the group, right? I mean, that's really fantastic. So this is one of my favorite aspects of Meetup. And in fact, oh my goodness, you know who's on today? You know who joined our class? Holt Mead, H-O-L-T-M-E-A-D. Holt Mead is the most wonderful husband of Susan Mead. And we launched Susan's book on Amazon. I just want to show you. Let's see how Susan's book is going. Susan's book stayed in the highest rankings of Amazon longer than I've ever, oh, <laughs> sorry, it's Dance with Jesus, not Dancing with Jesus, and she stayed so high on Amazon, we couldn't believe it. Look at this, even now, weeks after her book launch, she's number 79 in Death and Grief. Like, this is a fantastic book. She has done so well with this book launch. So I'd really like to do a bonus or two for us when this class ends, and I think I'll do this class on Amazon algorithm for you. I just want to see if she's still in the rankings on Kindle also. No, but to be still top 100 in all of Amazon in her rank is phenomenal. The book launches March 30th, so it's like weeks and weeks ago, you guys. How is Meetups related to LinkedIn? It's not. LinkedIn groups are separate from Meetup the way Facebook is. So it's a whole different social network, which is really cool. They all sort of live like countries in Europe. Do you remember that slide when we first started our class several weeks ago where I showed Europe and it was all these countries next to each other? And you can get from one to the other, but they have nothing to do with each other, really. I mean, Spain has nothing to do with France. They have nothing to do with England. They have their own language, culture community population and that's how meetup is too so there could be people on meetup that are nowhere else because it's so unique it's not it's a social network but it isn't so uh, the typical age group that does meetup judy this is wild it's all over the place because if we look for hiking we'll get younger people usually it just seems like there we go. I can click through. And we can see sort of the demographic is often very much younger, right? Oh, my God, does it look so much younger? Um, we can go and we can find, I can type in the word millennials in New York City, and I bet I can get groups on that. Within 25 miles of, let's go for New York, and let's just check it out. 
And there are a ton of people like my age. Look at this, talent tech. So these are going to be younger people because the keyword millennials brought up the group. So, you know, this is a really great way to know that you can get, oh yeah, it's such a way to get a lead base. I mean, this is fantastic. And you can even reach out to members in the group. So look at this. I'm not a member of this group, right? I haven't joined yet. So this is a public profile, Jovina Whatmore, and I could message her. I don't need anyone's email. I can just write and say, I see you're a part of this talent tech New York City. I'm reaching to create some talented tech women, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, this is a tremendous asset. Now, here's the thing. This isn't like reaching out to a group on LinkedIn where you can reach a whole group of people in a blast. It's more specific. But here's the thing. We all know that the more person to person you are on social media, the more the rewards. Wait, I said that backward. The higher the rewards that you're going to get. So this is really wonderful. So, Judy, I don't remember what you, you do a lot of different things. That's why I'm saying, are you in real estate? Am I right? I'm going to let her answer. This is the gorgeous, wonderful Judy Maggie. She is in real estate. Imagine this. I can go in and I can find, let's just try newlyweds. Let's see if we can find a group focused on newlywed marriages. Let's try. I'm just thinking New York is wonky enough that there might be such a thing. Let's go for groups. <gasps> Look at this. Okay. Wedding planning meeting. Catholic couples meet up, South Asian Desi couples. I don't know what Desi means, but let's try this. Newlyweds, look at this. Oh, my heaven, right? So I don't even, I mean, this is all of our friends are signals. So I'm just going to say, look how amazing this is. Now, the reason I ask that, Judy knows. One great space to find people looking for their first home. Oh, you're looking to buy a wedding temple. I remember that. So both of these, for both reasons, this is a fantastic group for you. So you would have to, in order to find, and South Asian, I mean, I, I mean, we all, we, I mean, this is a broad statement. And I hope it's not reverse prejudice. But what we know is um, South Asian people are often have a more, they often have more money to buy things with because they are savers. So just keep that in mind. And I, it's a little bit ethnocentric. I don't mean to be, but, you know, it's just, just the nature of being first generation anybody you know so a fantastic space right this is a really important thing so for you you could absolutely find leads here and you could reach out to the organizer right the organizer is always here on this left arm it never changes you could reach out and say I've got a great program where I talk about first home buying and I would love to come to your community and if you really wanted to blow their socks off I don't know what nationality they are, but you could write and say, you know, I've done this with Greek groups, Akharisto, which is thank you in Greek. So we've done this for Susan Mead also. Susan Mead's book is really about grace, not grief. But I mean, the people that the book is written for are those who are grieving, who had a loss. So I can write in the word, um, maybe bereavement is the right word. Did I spell that right? Bereavement? I wonder if it will correct me if I didn't. So I'm going to go to New York, New York again, because it's probably big enough to have a bereavement group. And I always have to toggle over. Now look at this. So here we go. This is great. Brooklyn Bereavement and Grief Support. Parents Meetup. Healing Grief. I mean, this is, Susan is coming to New York again. She was not here long ago, actually. We just didn't have much time. She was here for an event. But the next time she comes to New York, um, 25 to 30 whose parents have passed away. I mean, this is a fantastic space for Susan to go and speak to them. I mean, and look, they're very specific that this is really for people who've lost both parents. Isn't this crazy? The group is so specific and they have 133 members. So let's explore for a second. Now, I'm not their, I'm not their member. So you can see these are public. So this is a notice for you if you don't want your picture and your, show, um, your profile to show up make sure that you mark it private because you can reach out to all of these people and you know something very intimate about them. So um, we could reach out to Sandy. He's lost his, I mean, so they tell their stories very publicly here, but people are this public on Facebook also. So I just, I want to be respectful. I don't want to seem voyeuristic, but I do want you to know that for instance, if we were looking at that group, well, 
you could reach out in order to support people. That's all I'm saying. So, so this is a wonderful, oh, look, Everlasting Footprint New York. This is so beautiful. Anyways, so I think this is a really important thing for people to know that you can create this sort of very specific outreach within your demographic with people who are willing to go out and find one another under the umbrella of a brand, right? So in this case, the brand would be grief. In Judy's case, the brand would be newlyweds. In my case, the brand is writers. I mean, you can just go on and on and on. South Asians are Indians. Oh, thank you, Chef Uma. I'm so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. I was like, South Asia, where is that? <laughs> okay. It's the term used in the USA. I gotcha. So I was sort of right about this. I have Indian people who come to New York are so hardworking. And I know from my daughter's friends and friends that I have made that they are amazingly hardworking. They save their money and they want to own homes. You know, this is, and they want to own big homes. Now I have amazing friends here in Monroe, New York, where I live, who built a home that is as big as a castle. We call it a castle. And I said to him, I was like, Mr. Sasha Kumar, I am never inviting you to my house. This is really humbling. Like my house would fit in your kitchen. <laughs> and he said, he's a wonderful man. And he said, no, please don't ever feel that way. You don't understand. In India to have a house the size of my kitchen is a miracle. There's not a lot of space and a lot is this little size. He said, this has been my life's dream to have a home this large. And it was amazing. So I just think for you, Judy, like that sort of a specific search would be really valuable. Um, let's look for Doug. Doug is an amazing coach. He, Doug, would you write in the chat the kind of coach you are? I don't want to get this wrong. If he's in a place where he can hear and type it in. Oh, Judy's in commercial real estate. Sorry. Well, then that won't exactly work, but you get the point. Commercial real estate, I would actually go out for startups or venture cap. Right, exactly. And believe it or not, you can find that. We could search startups and you get this, I mean, amazing sort of, it's unbelievable how meetup works because New York is a metro area. So I just want you guys to know, like, if you live in Oki, Wiscogee, it might not work for you. So I'm going to go to groups. Like, don't forget that toggle will always work against you. And look, New York Entrepreneurs Startup Network. Oh, that's Andrew Wong's group with 13,000 people. You want to befriend human beings who have a group with 13,000 people, right? Isn't this crazy? So you could reach out and go to their networking events, get to know them. I know it's unbelievable. So I'm often saying like the thing Andrew Wong doesn't have, maybe this, I don't know if, if this is NYESN. Well, she, he has entrepreneurs NYEBN. So maybe this is a different group, but it's huge. So Doug is a nutritionist, naturopath, and cycling coach. So, I mean, definitely you can go out to the fitness crowd. That's one thing. You can also go out to the mommy groups. So I'm just going to be specific for you guys who are on. And I'm going to say moms. Because I think moms are a great place for a health coach. Why does it keep defaulting back to, to uh, there we go. Here we go. Stay at home moms meet up. Moms around the seventh. I mean, the thing, that, the reason that I say moms, Doug, is not only do moms face the challenge of often becoming overweight because they don't prioritize themselves. I fall right into that category, so no fingers pointed, except all back at me. But I think we also, many of us face the challenge of how do we feed our kids properly? And certainly in broad spectrum, I'm right, because as a nation, we have the unhealthiest kids. It's, it's a challenge so many working moms face. So you could reach out to some of the mom groups and offer just a free online tutorial and, um, you know, a free online webinar. I mean, this would be terrific. And you are so compassionate. Oh, well, right. I mean, online. I mean, I would definitely offer a webinar or you could come to New York and we can house you here at my house. You know, you and your better half can come and we will host you so you could do a meetup tour, you know. But, and look, this is Summit, New Jersey, so it's still a commute for me, too. <laughs> Not quite yours. Doug is in Australia. So, so just, 
But we could try. I, you know, I have never looked in Australia, but let's try. I think I might have to go find Meetup Australia for you. I'm going to try it. Now, Doug, I know Australia is, like, huge. Could you tell me what side of Australia are you in? If we were to look at these cities, what's close? Let's just do a Melbourne example. So we're going to try moms. Oh, Queensland. Not Melbourne. That's the other side. Queen Bay? Okay, really? Queensland's not here? All right. That doesn't sound right. Well, a bit north of Melbourne. Oh, I wasn't so far. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to look up moms again so that we can find moms. And we want to go groups. Because it's looking for meeting meetups or groups, right? A meetup is actually an event where people get together. So look at this. So this is, I'm going to sort by the number of people in the group, right? It searches by recommended. I always want to change that to most members. So this is terrific. Women's friendship groups, single parents, Melbourne singles, women entrepreneurs. Now, I guarantee you if we look at the pictures of the members, you are going to see that they are your right people. Um, 531 lady entrepreneurs, and I bet a huge chunk of them, no pun intended, sort of look like me because we don't have time to take care of ourselves. So I'm lovely, but I could definitely use a dog in my life, right? So I'm just saying, like, this is a great way for you to choose a demographic and reach out specifically with a webinar created for them or to go and give a speech. The other side, of course, is people already interested in fitness. So let's go back up to the right and click this meetup. It always takes you to the search. And you can go, um, let's try bicyclists. Is that the right word? Bicyclists. Let's try. Oh, it took me back to Monroe, New York. But let's try that. We always want to move back to groups, not events. And, well, I don't know why Cornwall Witches comes up for bicyclists, bicyclists but... You get the picture, right? I don't have to belabor this anymore for you all. The point is to think out of the box. The point I want to make is I want you guys to think really out of the box for this. Like, would Doug normally think of moms as a great demographic to reach out to around nutrition and cycling? Well, he might, but he might not. What other spaces, like Susan Mead, we could look up bereavement, that makes sense. But we could also look up, you know, women who've gone through miscarriage, believe it or not, Meetup is an amazing space to find even such specific demographics. And with a heart based in service toward others, you can always reach out even to the most delicate of groups with that heart. Susan, certainly, her spirited heart is all about service and helping people move to grace. So, you know, with the right demeanor, it's never intrusive to reach out. So I want to give you guys an example. I'm going to go to my own inbox. I have been writing to groups to invite them to a Master Shah event. And under my other meetup, this one I didn't get many responses. But in my other meetup, right, I've got two. This one is um, one login. I'm going to log out and show you the other one. So I'm going to log in as I may get Viral Integrity. And... You'll see it looks a different little profile, right? It's just a little bit different. I'm going to go to the inbox here, and I've been inviting people to Master Saw's event. And look, I invite them to the event. Dear ones, you and your group are invited to join World Renowned Miracle Soul Heater um, Master Shot. And they wrote back and said, I'll make sure my group receives the announcement. Thank you. I'm so excited to um, hear back from you. Um, many best wishes. There you are. So I'm just going to send a little thank you note, right? Because thank you builds relationships. And I'm going to go and see what was the group. This was coolest writing group ever in Hawaii. So I reached out to a group in Hawaii to market to them in a very transparent way and in a very loving way. Yes. Is, if you start a group, is it appropriate to charge them a cover fee? It is. So let's shift to that. You guys all feel pretty comfortable with, you know, how to get around Meetup and how to search a group, why it's useful, with what it looks like, right? So that we can, um, so you can see sort of on the left, right, it all looks the same. It's the head is always the name of the group. 
the tabs are always the same. This is the home. This is the members of the group, right? This is photos of the groups. So you can really get a feel for people and what they're doing. Sometimes they'll even have photos of the actual meetup groups, which is fantastic. Pages. Discussions. So you can actually see their message board, even if you're not a member. And more. My writers group, we used to use the more to put files in where we would share writings. You can actually put videos in the files here. It's crazy. So this is a really, really good thing for you to know. Like, it's... I. I can't say enough. Oh, sorry. Where did I go? <laughs> Hold on. I don't know where I went here. Uh, there we go. There's a speed meeting business group in Minneapolis. Like speed dating. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's, there's tons of stuff. Um, so, okay. So what I'm going to do now, you know, this is, you know what everything looks like on the left. On the right, it's just, you know, upcoming meetups, new members. It's just sort of a running what's going on in the group recently. Um, here are their keywords, right? This is why this came up for writing or meditation, because when you start your group, you're going to pick 15, I think it's 15 words that describe the group. So I'm going to actually try and start a meetup group. Here we go. So Monroe, New York is my hometown. I'm going to say next. And this is where I pick my 15 topics. So I'm actually, see, these are some, just, this is very broad because they want you to choose and then they'll give you more specific ones to you. The reason all these moms are up, because in my personal profile, I have mommy words. But I'm going to say writing. And I'm going to say, actually, you know what I want? I want to start a group on meditation. So I'm going to say guided meditation, spirituality, self-improvement, transformation. You see how the words change based on what you pick? So I'm just going to keep going because after I set this up, anybody who's putting these words into their personal profile will get a message that I have put this group up. So meet up markets for you. Consciousness, mindful meditation, um... Show more. So I'm going to say show more. Let's see. I like that. Buddhist meditation. Oh, see, I've picked my 15 topics. I've hit my limit. So then we say, so that's it. I could take one out and I could choose a different one. But so far, I like this. Next. So here we go. We, to help jumpstart your meetup, we will invite people near you who may be interested in joining. How do they do that? Because on your personal profile, you choose keywords based on what you're interested in. So think of this as a lock and a key. So if you want to get a feel for it, because the mind remembers things in a funny way, take your left hand, take your right hand, keep them separate, and now just interlace them. And that's how it fits together, like a lock and a key. And I'm going to say I agree, because you have to agree to run a face-to-face -face meeting. So a great name tells where you're located and what the group does. So I'm going to say Monroe Meditators. Monroe, um, Monroe Meditation and Writing. And Writing. I uh, spell that, Mary. And Writing. Monroe Weekly. There we go. I think that's pretty good, right? Okay. And now I want to describe this. This group meets weekly at various locations to experience a guided meditation and um, sometimes a writing exercise. Sometimes a writing exercise. Um, Yes, I could charge a fee. I'm just going to say this. Um, all are welcomed. What are members called? I'm going to say um, happy souls. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That feels good. Save and continue. And there we are. Isn't this cool? So now this is my plan. I can 
limited to 50 members and four organizers is $10 a month. Is that crazy? It is so inexpensive. Grow My Meetup as large as I like is $15 a month. I'm just going to say yes. So six, if I go for six months, I save 25%. So if I want to go for six times 15, I don't know what that is. So it's $90. It's not bad at all. So I'm just going to say one month. $19.99. Okay, that's fine. And then I could fill in all of my details to start the group. So I'm actually going to go back because I'm just going to do this for to show you guys. So I'm just going to pay uh, oh, what I do here. <laughs> Hold on a second. I hate it when that happens on the Mac because I can never fix it, you guys. It's one of those like slide two fingers and hold the third. Okay. So no questions. I'm just checking for questions. Oh, now I lost my setup. Isn't that crazy? Okay. So I'm going to start a meetup. We're going to do it again. Oh, look. There it is. So my group is already here. Thank you so much. Save and continue. So they saved that entire little spiel for me, which is fantastic. And now they're going to let me start a plan. So I'm going to say starts at $9.99 a month. If I only want one month, it turns out to be $15. I have to do six to get it. So I'm just going to start here. Dariaga Santanopoulos. And I don't know which one. Here we go. I think. Oh, I cannot remember it. <laughs> All right. Let me just see. Well, I'm going to actually do this later, but I wanted you guys to see how easy it is. Let me show you the rest inside of one of the groups I already own because that'll be a little bit easier. See all of my groups. So I'm just going to go to see all the groups and some of them I actually own. So let's see. I don't know where they are. Fusion, Master Shaw, Toronto, San Francisco. You know what, you guys? I'm going to log into the other account. This is the problem with having two. Because I think the group I want to show you is under the other account. Here we go. So this one has, here we go, Soul Healing Miracles and Soul Song. So the reason I wanted to show you this one specifically, let's use the other one, Soul Healing Practices. We set this group up as a demonstration for one of Master Shah's community members. I set it up in Brooklyn. The day it went up, it got announced, and it got 30 members. Is this crazy? 30 members in Brooklyn, New York. This is crazy. So I'm just going to show you. Members, sponsors, photos, pages, discussions, and more. Right? So this is fantastic. This is the same tabs that you saw before when you're just a member. But when you own the group, you have an additional tab over here, which is group tools. This is what I want you to see. And then I'll show you how to change the look of a group and the banner and all that. But for right now, the most important pieces you can know are how to schedule a meetup, how to email your members. Yes, you can email your members without ever collecting their email addresses. So this is a huge way to have an amazing email list without ever collecting email addresses. Imagine Andrew Wong with 13,000 members, right? Group settings, money, that's a good one for those of you who ask, can I collect money? Organizer tour and edit appearance. So let's do the organizer tour. So here we are. Here's congratulations on starting a meetup group. I think this is like a one minute video. Oh, it is. I'm right. One in 30 minutes, 36. So let's watch it together. It's a weird thing to say, I'm going to schedule a meetup even when there's no other members. Like, who am I scheduling it for? But actually, that's, that's called leadership. And even for people who never think of themselves as a leader, it's this act of strength to say like, hey, whoever out there wants to meet up about this thing, this is when and this is where we're going to meet up. These tens of thousands of amazing communities that have emerged on Meetup, it all started with someone making that leap of faith. 
my first meetup, I was hoping that lots of people would show up, and it was only one person, which was kind of disappointing. But actually, you know, even if it's just one person showing up, that can be magic on its own. In fact, the one person that showed up became my co-organizer and actually became a good friend. You know, there are people that might be important to your life that you haven't met yet. People who might end up being best friends or helping each other out or hiring each other or buying or selling from each other, whatever it is, being the catalyst for that kind of connection, that's what makes the world work. And it takes people like meetup organizers who have the guts to press that button and get it started. I say congratulations for starting a meetup because you have the guts to have started something that can become such an important thing to your members' lives, and all you have to do is just connect the people together. The most powerful thing in the world is what happens when people meet up. I just want to tell you guys, like part of the reason I teach this, I can almost cry, I don't know why, but this has really been important to me. This has been a huge part of my personal development as a leader, and it's not a word I use comfortably, to be honest. Um, I started a meetup group called Writers at the Monroe Diner 10 years ago, and it had 65 people. Um, so I want to answer your question. <laughs> I'm just distracted by this. So um, let's see. Judy says, if I wanted to find people interested in getting married, what group category would I look in? I would look for singles, believe it or not, because the reason people join singles groups is they're always looking for somebody else. They're always looking to couple up. It's like part of our innate human nature. So I know that sounds crazy, but I would reach out and um, that's what I would do. I know. Well, anyway, see how that works. And there are also wedding event organizer groups, and that's not necessarily just for uh, wedding organizers, right? But I think wedding event organizers would be a fantastic place for you who are starting a chapel. And I know that you're also credentialed as um, some kind of minister. Am I right? Um, Shiroko, I missed the beginning. What are they telling us to do with meetups? Oh, well, let's play it again. Just I won't play the whole thing. It's a weird thing to say, I'm going to schedule a meetup even when there's no other members. Like, who am I scheduling it for? But actually, that's... That's called leadership. And even for people who never think of themselves as a leader, it's this act of strength to say like, hey, whoever out there wants to meet up about this thing, this is when and this is where we're going to meet up. These tens of thousands of amazing communities that have emerged on Meetup, it all started with someone making that leap of faith. My first meetup, I was hoping that lots of people would show up and it was only one person. Which you know what he was saying, Sherpa? Sure, he's saying get together for whatever. You can market to them. I mean, I've run some meetups where it was strict. Well, I have to say this. If you run a meetup that's about marketing, they may stop you. So be careful. I've definitely had groups where they thought I was about marketing to somebody, and they told me I couldn't start the group. They'll literally stop the group. And I was so upset because I've never sold anything to a meetup. In fact, this exact class, I started a meetup just to teach small business owners for free, but they thought I was marketing. So Get a feeling for your group first and, you know, definitely um, can you join meetups and not go and then send them stuff? Yes, I have done that. I would always lead with a give, give, get, you know, just just know that. I mean, you're it's easier to market to a group that you have a relationship with. It's just like any human being. Right. First, you have to build rapport. And so I would absolutely, you know, reach out the way that I did and say, you know, I have this great talent. I would love to share this with your writer's group. Was this the profile that I did that on? Um, let's see if it is. I Because I sent a note just to demonstrate to you guys. Yeah, look. Hi, Ronnie. I'm so excited to have joined your group. I just wanted to offer that I teach a class on using the Amazon algorithm to support a short Amazon run for bestseller. I've launched, you know, I gave some credentials, and then I offer to go in and teach this for free. Because once you've established a relationship, it's a lot easier to go back and say at the end of a free meetup, right? At the end of a free thing I teach, I can say, hey, you guys, I do teach this class. It's really inexpensive. It's designed so anyone can afford it. It's $300. And if you can't afford it, please come talk to me, you know. So I am really excited. Um, oh, Judy's husband, amazing architects with a group that says, let's be smart and talk about everything and anything. Well, that is a group I would like to join. <laughs> um, so this is really the core of it. You know, this, this is why I don't have slides for it. Like meetup is a place where, you know, I answer questions and we jump around to sort of show you how to work it and how it is. 
So I want to go back to that example of the group that I own, which is Soul Healing Practices. And I put that in as me. And what I did was I set it up so that Master Elaine can go in and teach meditation and soul healing to this group of people. But it was just an example. It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't, you can see, it started in June and all these people joined. And I was like, how did they even discover it? We did nothing to market this group. And you know what it told us? It told us that people are really suffering, that people in Brooklyn, New York are looking for soul healing. And we need to get down there and do a live meetup for these people. So let me go through the group tools one by one, and then we can do some more questions if you have them. So the first thing I want to do is maybe I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to show you edit appearance, because if you set up a meetup, you're going to want to make it look like your brand. So at the bottom, when I go to group tools, edit appearance, um, I get a banner across the bottom that wasn't there before. Did you guys ask me for something? No. Okay. Um, I get this banner across the bottom. So I'm going to choose color palette and I can actually just click one and it all changes right in front of me. I mean, this is a really cool thing, right? Ta-da! So easy. Then I can put in a banner image. So I can choose a file here, and I can actually just load a banner image. Let me find one that's a little bit spiritual. Um, I'm going to go to pictures. And I'm just going to find one that's sort of, because it's a spiritual group, I'm just going to see if I can find something that, you know, just randomly. I've got a lot of spiritual pictures, so maybe I can find one quickly for us. And if not, I'll give up and not drive you all crazy. Oh, there's one. Perfect. Now, they're going to tell me what best looks right. So you can see, like, it would be better if it was the right size. And it would be better if I'm going to put a banner image that had the words, the name of the group in it. So I'm going to remove that image, but I wanted you to see what it looks like. I can also put a background image. That picture might be great for a background image. Of course, I would have to find it again. So we're not going to grab that one, but let's just grab any one so you can sort of see, um, these are, whose picture are these? Oh, these are Cheryl Liu's. Well, I don't want to do that because they're branded to her. She is such a sweetheart. Cheryl Liu, another client of mine does the 24 hour woman and she is just amazing. And her quotes are so beautiful. I could probably use her quote, but I haven't asked her. Oh, great. Perfect. So here we go. Ta-da. Let's see what happens. So this is across the bottom. Is This is this ribbon. Wow, that feels magnificent, doesn't it? I'm going to say save. Don't ever forget to just, you have to save your changes. Otherwise, your change that you worked so hard on disappears. So back to group tools, that's an edit appearance, right, you guys? That feels really good, doesn't it? Actually, I love that color. So then I'm going to say we did organize a tour. Let's just see if there was something else. I went to the video pretty fast. But here, this is their FAQ also. So if I need help on scheduling a meetup, scheduling a recurring meetup, um, group settings, appearance settings, manager, managing organizer dues, member dues, Judy, that's the one you want to look at and be really clear about when you set up your group for people. Um, or for an event, you can just ask for a couple of bucks. You can pass the hat there to cover coffee and cake. Or you can, um, you know, you can set up a little fee to even say yes. So I'm going to show you that in a couple of seconds. So I'm going to go to um, email members. I can email all 30 members here. Watch this. Um, soul healing event coming up. Dear everyone. Oh, thank you for joining Soul Healing Meetup Group. I am so sorry we didn't have an event yet. The Dao Master who will be uh, leading the event was tied up writing a book. We are launching our first event in June and in late May. No, it's already May, right? Okay, in June. And I... Um, hope you will be able to join us. join us. Please invite a friend um, and know you are blessed and loved by 
um, there you have this. And that's it. I'm just going to leave that little note. Now look, I could hide my email address, but I don't let them have it. Also post on the message board. And I could even put in a picture, you guys. Are you ready? So I can click. So this works just like most things, as you know. So I could bold, less and left by all. I'm going to bold that. I could underline it. I can add a link to something. So if I wanted to give a link to my website, I could link to myself or to anything else. I can center it. <laughs> I can bullet point. It's just, this is just marvelous. I can put in a smiley face. Let's put in a smiley. Yay. Um, or I can put in an actual picture. So let's do that. I'm going to choose a file. I'm just going to put in a random picture. I'm going to actually, I'll put in my, I'll put in my picture. And then upload. The only thing is it'll probably look huge. Yeah, so I want to shrink it if I can. I don't think I can. Well, there we are. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm actually going to send it out. So I could preview or I could just submit. So I'm just going to submit. And there we go. Your email has been sent to all members. Subscribed. So thir probably all 30 of them will get that message. That's fantastic. That makes me really happy. Let's do group tools again. So that's email members. I've never, you, you can't collect email addresses here. You'd have to convert them over. Um, group settings. Let's check out group settings for a minute. Now, this is going to look like a lot of choices. You want to look at the categories. So this is the basics. This is if you want to change your group name, your headline, your description. What are your members called? Where do you meet? Right? So this is a really great event, a really great space. My members. So these are my profile questions. So let me show you. The profile questions. What type of healing would be meaningful in your life? And please share your greatest current challenges so I may be useful to you. I mean, this is great. This is just fantastic. So I just want you to know when you set up your meetup, having questions like this, like Judy, you could ask, you know, what are your greatest challenges around planning your wedding? Do you have a chapel? Do you need a chaplain to get you married? Doug, you could say, what are you doing for fitness now? What's your level of nutritional understanding? You know, Please grade it one to five with five being I'm a nutritional guru, one being I eat Twinkies for breakfast. <laughs> so, so your questions can really help you understand the group overall and each individual. So if I were to write back, I'm a one, I eat Twinkies for breakfast, you could reach out and say, Mary Agnes, can I give you a free coaching call and just talk about breakfast? We won't even complicate it too much. I'll give you two ideas for breakfast and, you know, maybe we want to work together. Let's just see if I can support you. And there it is. I mean, it's really simple. So let me check if you guys have any questions. No, we're good. Okay. Um, under group tools again, we're going to look at money for a quick second. This is where I can talk about membership dues, right? This is also where I can follow the transactions. So I can set up membership dues. I can manage contributions. I can schedule paid meetup events. Manage sponsors, make public to members, oh, so that they can see the transactions. So you can actually keep the books around your meetup group right here. So record an expense paid. I mean, this is a really great little tool, right? I love this. So as a host, it's nice to have all your ducks in a row financially. Just a good thought. And then finally, I'm going to schedule a meetup. So I just want to... Uh, I'm so glad Judy wrote she loves hearing about this space. Yes, I'm telling you, I think what happens is people are like, meet up. I don't want to go hiking. <laughs> but this is a space that has so much promise for all of us. So I'm just going to go and show you what it looks like to schedule a meetup. And then we'll move on to questions and answers, because this is the space. In a nutshell, a one hour tutorial gives you expertise in this space. Don't you love it? Woo! Round of applause. I mean, I feel like Facebook, I can give you guys a start. LinkedIn, I can give you a start. But when I teach meetup, I feel like, go get them. Yay. So what should we do? We're going to schedule a meetup. I'm going to say soul healing workshop. I'm going to select a date and a time, even though I don't really know for sure. I'm going to talk to um, the people who would do this. I'm going to choose a date way at the end of June. Um, maybe June 26th. What's a good night for a soul workshop? Thursday night. We'll say the 25th at, I'm going to say, um, 6.15 p.m. 
you know what? I'm going to make it a weekend because I'm going to drive those guys down there. I think. So I'm going to say a Saturday morning. I'm going to say Saturday at 9 a.m. in the morning. No, I have to get them down there. 11 a.m. at 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> that feels pretty good. Uh, set an end time. Nope, I'm not going to set an end time. I'm going to say how to find us, uh, location TV to be announced. So look, right now, all you're going to do is fill out a form. That's how easy it is. So I'm going to give details about the meetup, like what are we going to do, and then who's hosting it. So this is really like just fill in the blanks. It's so easy. So automatically repeat. You could say to repeat once a week or once a month, the fourth Saturday. I mean, isn't that awesome? Then I can charge for the meetup. Yes, I'm going to charge the members. I'm going to start collecting. And here's the, the ways I can collect their money. And they can pay it right here through Meetup. Isn't that crazy? Yes, I'll offer a refund if the meeting is canceled. Isn't that terrific? RSVP settings. So this is where I can say how many people are limited. So there's no limit or it's limited to 20 people. And then we'll have, um, oh, I can't wait list if there's a payment to attend. So no problem. Allow members to come with up to two guests. So remember, if you do say that, it's 20 attendees but it could be as many as 60. So you can say that, but it's limited to 20 attendees. So um, when can members RSVP to this? They can start now. They can RSVP until three days before the event. I'm gonna change that. Isn't that terrific? Um, email reminders are on or email reminders are off. I wanna have them on because Meetup will automatically remind them the day before, the day of, these event reminders are fantastic, and you don't even have to do it. Isn't that terrific? Ask question when members RSVP. Now, I can ask profile questions again, like, are you a healer? Or in need, or just in need of healing? So, there we go. I can save it as a draft. Ta-da! Um, Meetup would like you to use WePay to accept payments online. Now, the cool thing about using their platform, WePay, is it's a single click. They don't have to click away to go to PayPal or click away. WePay, it just runs right through here, and it's sort of like, um, sort of like PayPal a little bit. So I'll let you guys explore that on your own, but I just wanted to say the plus of using their system, and it charges the same as any other system, like it's like a 2% credit card handling fee is that it's really easy for the person to sign up and pay for your event. So I'm just gonna go back now. Da, da, da. So here it is to set up an event. In a nutshell, it's the basics. It's the name, the date and time, where you're gonna host it. If you click find a place and you just type in the neighborhood, look at this. Isn't this terrific? I mean, it'll just give me a place. The details, who's hosting, repeated, charging for this event, RSVP. I mean, this is just magnificent. So I'm going to shrink them all. So you can see this is like the eight criteria. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pieces of criteria. It's just so easy. So do you think you could do this? Do you think it's a good investment? Oh, so, oh, yeah, it is. Right? It's new to a lot of us, Uma. It's awesome. We talk about, about the money tab is all about. Absolutely. So under group tools, money covers all things financial on the space. So it's these little clickable tabs underneath that are what the money is all about. So they're, they're disparate. They're different. They have nothing to do with each other, but money is the category they fall under. So there's membership dues or contributions for members. There's scheduling paid meetup events, right? Where I'm going to do an event. There's a great speaker. She's bringing workbooks. I'm going to charge 20 bucks a person. Sponsors. You can get sponsors or make public to members. So those are really the categories around money. And there's also, okay, so membership dues. Let's look at this for a minute. Turn on automatic renewals. Cover the cost of your community. Manage payments for a low fee. Look at this. Meetup will actually manage this. Nice. So membership dues, if we were to get started, 
They'll walk you through the process of saying um, $5 each to be a member of the group. Dues will be used to cover the meetup expenses. And to attend, they can try the group for free, but they must pay dues before attending meetups. Free trial length, I can tell them they're free for 60 days. I have to make sure I have a group, though, a really good group. Or I can say to be a member, they have to pay the dues. So meetup will remove any unpaid members at the end of their trial period. So again, they get a trial period. Nice. So to attend a meeting or to be a member, those are your choices when you're charging dues. Okay? Let's go and look at some of the other ones. I'm going to go back under the money tab again. Sorry, group tools, money tab. That's membership dues. And remember, we paid a fee to even have a meetup group, $15, right? So if members pay five bucks, that feels pretty good. We're all contributing. Manage contributions. So this is where they chip in, set an amount, and then you get the money in your meetup little accounts here using WePay. So this is fantastic. What fees are associated with collecting? So they're explaining the 3%, right? Can you turn contributions off? I didn't know we were looking. Oh, contributions, we are. So this is easy for people to show their support for the group. So if I don't want to charge them a fee just to belong, I don't want to charge that $5 monthly fee or whatever, you can easily ask them to contribute if they love the group. So this you must have WePay set up for, but this is just a great way to run your group. If I was going to teach this class, maybe I would do it for contributions instead of a monthly fee. Um, let's go back and look at money again. That, so that's membership dues, contributions, scheduled paid meetup events. And this is going to be the same shell we looked at before, but this is especially around charging for this meetup. So all it did was open the same you know, group tool for scheduling a meetup, but we're looking at the money side. So this tab is just cross-connecting, right? Scheduling a paid meetup event is opening that start, um, schedule a meetup. Manage sponsors. The group doesn't have sponsors right now, but if you want to add a sponsor, click here. I can say something about the sponsor. What does sponsorship offer the group and their website? So I could go get a sponsor for this group. I could ask Master Shah to sponsor it, or I could get a sponsor. Maybe a restaurant in the community would give us a space to hold the meeting. So that's just a good thing for you to know. And then finally, make public to members. That means I'm going to let them see the transactions that are going into the expenses around this group. So if I were going to charge them a monthly fee, I might like them to know where that money is going, you know, so they could see that I got a speaker who received a $500 payment or $50 to rent space for the meeting. You get the picture. So that's really the tab around money. Um, oh, my heaven. Yes, you could teach people how to be a wedding officiant and charge. Yes, especially healers. You could go out to the healer groups, Judy, because an awful lot of healers you know, really would love to do weddings. And that is one way healers could make a few dollars where they don't generally have an income stream. It's difficult. They really have to set themselves up almost as a coach in order to build a practice that makes an income under the umbrella of healer, right? So, in fact, I would love you. I, I would absolutely love you to teach that to some of the healers that I work with, how to be a wedding officiant and charge. So let's talk about that offline sometime. So that's it, you guys. That's really the whole sort of um, umbrella of Meetup. It's how to use groups that someone else owns, how to set up your own group, how to run a community, how to be part of other communities. I mean, it's a really lovely space, Meetup, and I hope that this has been valuable to you tonight. Do any of you have any questions I can answer? I'm going to open you up one by one. We only have a handful of us. So I'm just going to go alphabetically. And Oh, it's not alphabetical. <laughs> oh, no, it is alphabetical. Okay. And if you don't need to be called on, you can put no thanks in the chat box, and I won't even call on you in case you're at work or something. So I'm going to ask Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Do you have any questions on Meetup that I can answer for you? Hi. No, uh, the only question is how often you can post on the Meetup, you know, before you Stop being annoyed, you know. <laughs> what, do you mean post to the group or do you mean write the... Yeah, to the group, to the group as a, as a leader. 
Well, you can post in the discussion board anytime you want, and I don't think that's annoying at all. Um, so in this case, I actually sent an email that I posted to the message board. But this is my message board. I'm going to show you how I got there. Right under this discussions tab, and then start a new discussion. You can start a discussion as often as you want. In fact, I would encourage you to do so. It's a way to keep your group engaged with each other, Tommy. But, um, but emailing out to your members, like that's the other way. Do you see it's highlighted here, group tools, email members? I would only do that when necessary or to send the, if you're not hosting meetups often enough, maybe to send them a message and just remind them they're part of the community and there are other things that they can do here. So, so does that answer your question? Yeah, it should have been more specific emailing to your group. Yeah. Oh, emailing to the group. No, I'm glad because I didn't really show the discussion and start a new discussion. So I'm really glad you weren't specific. I, that's such an opportunity for all of us. Um, in this discussion tab, you can offer great links to things you love, like, hey, guys, I read this great blog, and then blink, link to the blog. And that's just a way to stay in touch and in service to them. Emailing the members, I would, like I said, I would either do it when necessary because I'm, you know, setting up a new meetup, or just to keep in touch with everybody if you're not hosting meetups regularly. All right? Mm-hmm. All right, thank you so much. Let's, you're welcome. Um, Chef Uma, how would you pitch yourself for a speaking gig to a group? Have you done this and does it work? It does, I have done it. So when I join a group, I showed you at the beginning, when I join a group, I always reach out to the group moderator. And I give them the opportunity for me to come in and speak to the group on a topic specific to them. So if it was soul healing practices, I might reach out and say, I know healers have a hard time marketing themselves. I would love to come in and do a social media workshop at no charge. This is what I do to be in service to others. I have an agency that is my income stream. So if it would be useful to you, and I've done that, and I've done that with writers too. Um, my friend Susan Mead, when she came, I thought we'd have more time together. And then I sort of, you know, my life has been a little crazy right now. But if um, if she was coming back again, I could reach out and say New York Times or Amazon number one bestseller Susan Mead would love to do a book signing for your group. She'll be bringing five complimentary books, a case of books people can buy, and would love to give a speech on moving through grief without losing your heart, soul, and mind, right? So that's a really good way to uh, to get speaking gigs and build your brand. Uh, let's see. I think uh, Judy said she's okay. Doug said he's okay. Gabriella is good. Um, Chef was good. Ambra. Ambra's okay. All right, you guys. Then I don't think we have any more questions. I think we're great. So we'll end a little early tonight. 909, only an hour and 10 minutes for our class, but I will get the recording to everyone. And I just want to, again, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to teach you. And I want to thank you all for your patience around the task list coming out for LinkedIn, which is now a week late. The only thing I can say is, you know, I'm so sincere in my heart that I will give you some great stuff in return for your patience around a mistake like that. I got a new client, a six-figure client, and we've been really, really, like, slammed with their their work without, I mean, it happened, we didn't know it was happening. All of a sudden, we were hired, so. Oh, yes, Chef Uma would like to ask a random question on another topic. Go right ahead. Would you like me to open your line and call on you, or do you want to type it in? And I ask that in case she's at work or something. I'm going to open your line. <laughs> Hold on a second. Unmute Chef Uma. And if you can't answer, don't worry. I'll just wait for your typed in question. Oh, let's see. 